Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make our toddler size hooded cat blanket. So you'll need two hooks for this project, a 10 millimeter as well as a 6.5 millimeter. Now these are the colors that I'm, I'm using for my blanket, but you can choose whatever you want. So Bernat Softy Chunky is the yarn that I'll be using. So this is a super bulky weight number six. You can use this yarn. It's on the lighter side of a super bulky six. If you want to substitute, you could also hold together two strands of worsted weight as an alternative if you don't have the super bulky yarn. So I'm using linen for the body, the main color of our cat. I've picked sea green for my eye color, and then you'll need some black and white as well. So here is our beautiful stitch pattern. It's worked in a multiple of three plus two. This toddler size that I'll be showing you today, you need to chain a total of 56 for this size blanket, but I'm just gonna work through a smaller swatch with you to show you how to work the stitch pattern. So we'll begin with our main color and our 10 millimeter hook. Now the PDF includes your sizing from toddler to adult and the link will be in the description box. So for the toddler size, you'll chain out 56. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna chain out a multiple of three plus two. So I'm just gonna go with 11 stitches so I can work through the pattern quickly with you. So put your slip knot on your hook and then we'll chain out for the toddler 56 and I'll chain out 11. Now what I like to do is crochet into the back humps of the chain rather than the side, the back loop of the chain. So all you need to do is flip your chain over to the side and you're gonna see those little bumps sticking up. So we wanna go in the second chain from the hook so that would be this one, and just work a single crochet. And this is just gonna get our base row set up for our pattern. So I will just single crochet across in each of those bumps. So for the toddler, you'll end up with a total of 55 stitches. And I will have a total of 10 here. And it's always good to do the little swatch just so you can test out your gauge for the pattern. And if you want the blanket to come out a similar size, then you want to check your gauge. So I have about seven stitches in four inches for this blanket pattern. So we'll chain two and turn. And now we're gonna get into our stitch pattern. So at the beginning of every row, we will chain two and that is not included as a stitch. And then we're working right into our first stitch right here. So we're gonna work a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet, all in that same stitch. So it's almost like a shell, but it's a shell that's increasing, or half a shell. It's just a little cluster, basically, stitch that you're making. So a single, half double, and a double. Then we'll skip over two stitches, and then we'll go into that third stitch and do the next cluster stitch again. So a single crochet, half double crochet, and then a double crochet. Then we'll skip two. One, two, do the same thing again. A single, half double, and a double. So then when you come to the end of your row, you should have three stitches. So your row, of course, will be much longer depending on the size you're working on. But you should have three stitches remaining. We will skip two and then we're ending with a single crochet in the last stitch. If we count across, I know I have 10 stitches, 
three, six, nine, and one in the last is 10. So when we start out with our beginning chain, it's a multiple of three plus two because we work back into the second chain. But once we get actually into the pattern, it's a multiple of three plus one. Okay, so that just explains how the pattern's working. Now what we'll do is chain two and turn again, or turn chain two. Um, it's the same thing, just how it's written is a little different. I like to do my chain two and then turn, but you can turn and chain two. Really whatever is your habit that you're comfortable with. So now it's just a repeat. So we're working a single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet all in that first stitch. Again, we do not count that chain two as a stitch. We skip over two. So now down, we're basically working down into the single crochet of our previous row. So then we work our single, half double, and our double, skip over two, skip the last two, and then in our very last stitch here, we'll work a single crochet. So as you can see, this is a very simple beginner friendly stitch pattern, but it gives our blanket a really nice texture. I love the look that it gives the blanket. So you're just going to continue in rows and my my gauge is about six and a half rows per four inches, but I'm not so concerned with the gauge on that. I just want you to work your blanket until you have approximately 26 inches for the toddler size. So follow along with your pattern for the size you're working on and just continue in rows until you get to that length. Now for the toddler, that's going to use up approximately four balls of yarn. So by the time you're getting close to that fourth ball, you should be getting to your 26 inches, especially if you have got the correct width, your seven stitches in four inches. So that is approximately about 31 inches in width. And by the time we add our border, the total blanket width will be about 32 inches. Okay, so once you've completed your length needed for your blanket, I'm just gonna chain one and turn my work and I'm just gonna leave I have a little bit left of this ball and I'm just going to leave it attached because what we'll end up doing is attaching our hood to the top of the blanket. We're just going to center it and then I'm going to continue to go around edging the blanket in single crochet stitches. So I'm just going to set this aside and then I'm going to show you how to make the hood. So I'll be using the main color and the larger hook to crochet the hood. So let's start by getting a slip knot on our hook. Then we'll chain out seven. This is the toddler size hood. So now we will work an extended single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each of the next four chains. So in the second chain from the hook, we'll work an extended one, two, three, and the fourth chain. So let's just go through that extended single crochet a little slower just in case this is a new stitch for you. So go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, and instead of yarning over and pulling through two loops, like a regular, regular single crochet, we're going through one and we're going through two. So it just extends the height of the extended single, making it closer in height to the half double crochet. But it just gives it a little bit more I feel thickness and texture to it, so it's a fun stitch to use. So now in our final stitch, we'll be adding 
two extended singles. Now we're gonna turn our work and we're working down the opposite side of the chain. So what we're, what we're gonna do, if you need to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six. So the first chain will have two extendeds. One. Because we're just basically working the same as what we did on this side. So now we should be working down into five. One, two, three, four, and five. You can give the tail a tug and that will need to get, um, you'll have to weave that tail in later. Okay, so now for, for row two, so this is a total now of 14 stitches. So we've worked a total of 14, we'll chain one and turn. So for row two, we, we will work one extended single crochet in each of the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And that now in the next four, we're going to work two in each. One. So two extended singles in each of the next four. So there's two, three, and four and then you should have five stitches remaining and I'll work an extended single crochet in each of those stitches. So then we'll chain one and turn. For row two you should have a total of 18 stitches. We increased by four. So now for row three we will work an extended single crochet in each of the next six stitches. And then in the next six stitches, we will work two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera, but in each of the next six, you'll work two extended single crochets. Then you should have a total of six remaining and work one extended in each of the remaining six stitches. Okay, so once you complete that row, you should have 24 stitches. And the next row, we're just going to work one in each. So we won't do any increases for the next row. So just work one extended in every stitch for a total of 24. So I'll just go ahead and work that and I'll meet you up for row five. Okay, so now we'll chain one and turn. And we have another increase row. So we're gonna work one extended single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. And then we're going to work in the next seven. So this is gonna be offset just slightly, but it's not gonna make a big deal. So instead of increasing up to 32 stitches, I need to have this only be, the hood only be 31 stitches for our stitch pattern to work correctly. 
So in the next seven, we'll work two extended single crochet. Okay, so I've worked two in each of the seven stitches, and now you should have nine remaining, and we'll add only one in the remaining nine. And chain one and turn. So now we have a total of 31 stitches and we're set up to work our stitch pattern like the blanket. Okay, so let's get into our stitch pattern. I'm gonna chain a total of two and then work a single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet all in the same stitch. We'll skip two, work a single, half double, and a double, skip two, single, half double, and a double. I want you to repeat that all the way around until we're down to three stitches remaining. Okay, so I have three stitches remaining. We're going to end with a single crochet, chain two, and turn. Okay, so that was row six, and now we want to work rows seven through 15 as just a repeat. So in the first stitch, we're working single, half double, and double. We skip two and then you should be going down into the single from the previous row. Just like the blanket pattern. Okay, so now you may want to, you can always add a stitch marker or just keep track of your rows as you're going. When you do look at the rows, you'll notice that one row will be going in like this and one row like this. So that does help you to count to make sure that you're at the right number of rows. So I'm gonna continue working this now off camera and I'll meet you up again. Okay, so the hat, the hood's gonna look something like this as you have worked it. Okay, so it's gonna fold over. This is how the back is gonna look. And you should have your tail on the inside ending on row 15. So next we're gonna work on, now what we can do is fasten off with a long tail for sewing to the blanket. You wanna make sure it's nice and long. We'll pull that through and we'll sew that, use that to sew this to the blanket later. So now just for measurement's sake, let's just take, just kind of finger block it to get its shape. It's about 16, depending if you stretch it out more, you, maybe 17 inches and the back hood height is about about six and a half inches. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to crochet the eye. I've already done one for you, so you'll be making two the exact same. You'll need black and white yarn, and then whatever color you would like to use for the eye. So I've used sea green, but again, you can choose really any color that you want for the eyes. And you only need a small amount. Now, if you're adding the eye color in for your fringe, then you'll need a full ball. But if you're just doing the eye color, you can just use some scrap yarn and you can always double up worsted weight to get any color that you want to use. So we'll begin with the black yarn and we'll make a magic ring. So I like to wrap the yarn around my index finger three times. Take my hook, pushing it through all three of those loops. Take your first loop, grab it, pull it through, and we'll chain one to get that secured. So now we'll be working into this ring, and I'm gonna work eight single crochet. Okay. 
Okay, now let's push our work out of the way so we can see those loops. I know it's difficult with the black to see, but what you'll do is take your tail and you'll start to pull and only one loop is going to pull in. Okay, only one loop will start pulling. So take that loop, pull it, and it's going to pull your other loop. And then you can just take your tail and pull. So this isn't going to come loose. It's nice and tight. Make a nice tight circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you're ever unsure of what stitch you need to slip stitch in, you just count back and we're slip stitching under the loops of our first single crochet. Now we'll chain two and we're gonna work two single crochet in every stitch around. So I'll work that off camera, but you'll be increasing to 16 stitches. So now we'll be changing over to our eye color. So whatever color you have decided to use, this is the time we'll be adding it. So I like to change on my slip stitch join. So what you'll do is go under that first stitch, the, the loops of your first single crochet. We're gonna pull in with the eye color. We're, we really need to pull that black tail tight to pull that in. Make sure the loop on your hook is pulled tight as well. So we're pulling everything nice and tight. We'll chain one and we'll be doing another increase round. So our increase pattern now will be one single crochet in the first and then two single crochet in the next. So one and then two. One and then two single crochet in one stitch. So repeat your increase pattern around and you should be going up now to 24 stitches. Okay, so now you can cut your black yarn. Let's get that out of the way. And you can just knot your blacks together. And then this is gonna save on some weaving because this is all gonna just get sewn to the hood. You won't even see it. So this is quick and easy to just give it a good knot and then trim, get those tails out of the way. So now we'll be changing over to white to finish off our eye. We're doing the same. We're gonna change on the slip stitch join. So go under the first stitch. Remember you wanna keep all of your tails nice and tight. Pull through with the white yarn. Get that eye color tail pulled really tight and the loop on the hook we want tight and we'll chain one. Now we're gonna continue with our increase pattern for this round, but we will be adding a few half double crochets in there as well. So just follow along. We'll do a single crochet in the first two and then we'll do two in the next. So we're gonna repeat that now two times. So a single crochet in the next two, and then two single crochet. So one more time, single crochet in the next two, and then two single crochet. Now we'll work a single crochet in the next two, and for our toddler, we'll now add two half double crochet in the next stitch. And this is just gonna give our eye that little bit of shape at the corners. Okay, so we'll add two half double crochets in the last stitch as well, and it'll just give the eye a little more shape. But now we'll go back to doing a single crochet in the next two, and then two single crochet. So repeat that pattern two more times. You should have three stitches remaining and I'll meet you up again. So now we're to the last three stitches. We'll work a single crochet in the next two and then two half double crochets in the final stitch. And I like to keep my eye stitches nice and tight. If you're a loose crocheter, 
you may find you want to drop down even a smaller hook just to keep the eye nice and small and tight for the toddler. So now what we'll do is we can cut our sea green and let's knot it up. And I'm actually going to pull in my white tail as well. Let's add that in and then we don't have to weave that tail. Okay, we'll make it a nice tight knot and then just trim these tails. Now we will fasten off with the white and we wanna leave a nice long tail cause we're gonna sew this eye to the hood and we'll make a seamless join here. You can always slip stitch to join. I just find that if we do this seamless, it just makes our eye stitches look perfect all the way around and it works out nice for when we're sewing it to the hood. So just get that yarn on your needle. And to do the seamless join, we are gonna take our yarn needle under the first two loops, under the first stitch and going under both loops. Pull that through. That's gonna make a faux loop going in this direction and then we'll take our tail and go through the back loop only of the last stitch we worked. And that's gonna make a loop, faux loop to the other side. Okay, and as you can see now, our eye is just gonna seamlessly go around. Okay, and then we'll use this tail to sew the eye to the hood. So now I have this eye made. The only thing that we'd like to add is just a little bit of highlighting to the eye just to give it some dimension. And to do that is really simple. We're just gonna take a piece of, just a small piece of white yarn. You just need to get that onto your yarn needle. And I like to go through the second round of black and we're just gonna go up in the corner. So just take your yarn needle, push the yarn up through and then just weave it back down. Okay, and then as long as you're happy with how they look, you can just go ahead and knot them at the back. Okay, and then you can just trim the tails. So the eye is now ready. And I'm just gonna keep my tails on the eyes to the outside. Gonna knot this one as well. Okay, so we'll work up the nose piece and again, the smaller hook will make a magic ring, magic circle. Push the hook through all of the loops, grabbing your first loop, pull it through and we'll chain two. I'm gonna work a double crochet, a half double crochet, a double crochet, oops. a half double crochet, a double crochet, we'll chain two, and then we'll slip stitch it to the ring. Okay, and I'm gonna pull the ring tight. So just like I showed you before, we're gonna take the tail, start pulling it, it's only gonna pull one loop. Now 
Okay, and then we'll fasten this off with a tail for sewing. Okay, so then our nose has this little cute shape to it. Okay, so to crochet the muzzle, I've already crocheted one. You're gonna be crocheting two pieces. We're just doing these little round pieces for the muzzle. So what we'll do is a magic ring. Push your hook through and we'll chain two working eight half double crochets in the ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now, Push the work out of the way, we'll pull the tail. Only one loop is pulling in, so take that loop that's pulled in and pull the other loop. Take your tail, pull that tight. Now we're gonna slip stitch under the first half double crochet to join. Chain one and work two single crochets in every stitch around. Okay, so once you've worked all the way around, you should have 16 stitches. Fasten off with a long tail. And we'll do the seamless join. So we're going under both loops of the first stitch. and back through the center of the stitch, through the back loop only. Now what we're gonna do is sew our two pieces together. So what you can do is put your right sides facing I'm going to go through approximately four stitches. So there's one, two, three, four. Now when we open it up, we'll have our two little muzzle pieces. So I want to get these tails out of the way. So I'm going to weave in these back tails just to get them cleaned up. So to weave, you just want to go one way and then back in the opposite direction to secure it. And trim. Okay, so now your nose piece, the point here down at the bottom will come to this section. And we'll want to take one of the tails to pull it through like so. So this tail I think I'll use to sew it on and then this tail can be used to make our little line through the muzzle. So get your yarn on your needle. Just gonna pull that through to join. I'm gonna leave that tail.
So when I sew this, I only want to go through the back loop of the stitch because we don't want it showing. So I'm just taking a bit of white yarn and then going through the back loop of that stitch. I know it's hard to see in black, but you just want to be catching that it's the back loop only. And just sewing that around. Just going through each stitch. Okay, and we'll use this tail, this black tail, to sew the black section to the hood. So I would just leave that. Now that we've got it attached to the muzzle section, now what we'll do is take this tail Just want to make sure the shape is correct so I'm doing this I really want to puff these little guys up so really it's just a lot of finger blocking and what I'll do is just knot and weave this tail just at the back here. I can get that out of the way. So now we have our black tail and our white tail for sewing this to the hood. Again, you might just need to do a little bit of finger blocking or use your needle just to get the shape of that nose. If you have a little bit of polyester fill, you could stuff this a little bit just to kind of puff it up. Or just use your fingers again just to form it. Okay, so here's how things are looking. You want to make sure that your pieces are going to fit on your hood. Now you can stretch the hood out a little bit. Before I go ahead to sew all the pieces on, I'm going to make the ears too. So I'm going to get the ears made. I'm going to position everything to see how it looks before I start sewing on the pieces. So for the ear, we'll be using our white and our main color, and we're starting out with the white yarn. So let's begin with a slip knot on the hook, and we're using the smaller hook to make the ear. We'll chain three. Work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and into the next stitch. Chain one in turn, work one single crochet in each stitch across. Chain one and turn and work two single crochet in each stitch across. Chain one and turn, work one single crochet in every stitch across. Chain one and turn, 
work two single crochet in the first stitch, one in each of the next two, and two in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. You can see we're making a nice triangle shape. We'll work one in each stitch across. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Chain one and turn. We'll work two in the first stitch, one in each of the next four stitches, and two in the final stitch. Chain one and turn, work one in each stitch across. So that's a total of eight stitches. Now on the last stitch, we will be changing over to our main color. So in order to do that, we're gonna change it on the pull through. So you pull up a loop and instead of yarning over now with the white, I'm gonna yarn over with the main color. Pull that through. I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now in the next two rows, we'll work a single crochet into every stitch. You can always crochet over that tail as you go, just to save on some weaving. So two rows should be at eight stitches. Chain one and turn and work across. Now I am just gonna trim cut white just to get that out of the way. Chain one and turn and now we'll start our decreases because we want this to basically equal the white section. We're just going now in the opposite direction. So we'll do a single crochet tog. So pull up a loop, go right into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Work across to the last two stitches. And then we'll do a single crochet tog across the last two. Chain one and turn and work across six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain one and turn and we'll do another decrease round, a uh, row. So single crochet two tog across the first two, single crochet in the next two, and the last two another tog. Chain one and turn. Work one single crochet in each stitch across. Chain one and turn. We're gonna do a tog across the next two and the next two. Chain one and turn, work a single crochet in each stitch and then chain one and turn and a single crochet tog across the final two stitches and chain one and turn. So now what we're gonna do is fold. Let's get this tail out of the way. So let's do a few things here. Let's get this tail. I crocheted over it in one direction. So what I'm gonna do is just weave it back opposite way that's just going to secure it and then we just know that that's taken care of give that a trim and what we're going to do is fold 
our piece up like this. So now we have the outside of the ear and the inner part of the ear. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is slip stitch to the top of the white to join that. Chain one and we'll work two single crochet in the top. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna crochet over this tail here as I go. We're gonna join our pieces together. One, and I like to count just to make sure both sides are the same. So there's two, three, four, Seven. And I'm getting to the corner, so let's do three. One, two, three. This tail I can trim and we're going to work across the bottom. So try and just push your hook down through that stitch. I'm going to go over the white yarn as I go here as well. And then in the corner, we'll do three stitches. One, two, three. Okay, and now we're going back up the side. And now if you remember, I had seven, so that's what we're aiming for on this side as well. are going to slip stitch to join. Okay, so there is the ear complete. And now you want to make two ears for the top of the hood. Now for sewing the, the ears, you're going to need to take a piece of yarn in your main color. And I made sure to position my hood well. I've stretched it out. And this is the center of my hood right here and it's lined up with the back. Now to get the ears to stand up, you really need to sew them almost to the front part of the hood. So we're gonna wanna kind of mold them to the shape of the hood, but we also want them to be even You can always mark even the center of your hood with a marker just to keep on track. One thing I always suggest with my hoods is don't weave in any tails until everything is sewn in place and then if you need to adjust things, you can. So you want your ears even on the hood. We want them kind of sticking straight up. I'm gonna come over here to the side to start sewing my ear. Oops. 
I'm going through just the one loop of the ear, not both. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll flip the hood and we'll start going through the back. And I'm just pushing the hook right up through the ear. It's just going to help stabilize it so that the ear stands up. Like I say, you can always take the ear off. If you don't weave the tails, it's really easy just to pull your yarn back out. So I like to just leave all those tails to the very end until I'm satisfied with how this looks. Okay, so I have the one there. I'm just gonna leave my tails. And now I'm gonna go over and do the same thing with this ear. I'm gonna make sure that it's even here with the center and that I'm gonna try and keep that ear pointing as straight up as I can. This yarn is really flexible to play around with too to shape your ears. So you just want to take another long piece of yarn and this time I think I'll start probably into the center and just work my way around. So I'm going to do that now off camera and I'll meet you up once I'm finished. So I just start placing my pieces on and we want these puffed up. Okay, so they're actually going to go in smaller than they look because you want to get them puffed up as you sew them in place. So get everything, just kind of put them onto the hood to make sure everything's fitting okay. I think my ears are looking good. Now another thing you can do, if you have a head, you can you can stick it on. That's great. You can see how the ears are standing up or I just use my yarn bowl just to make sure that the ears are gonna stand up and that they're in a good position for the hood. So I think I'm happy with my placement. So I'm going to get rid of my tails and then I'm going to get the eyes in position to sew them to the hood. Okay, so I have everything adjusted. My eye is going to go up almost into my ear. It's okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I know I need to have these eyes sewn up here. Then what you're going to do is, again, take your yarn needle and when I sew it, I'm just going to go through part of the hood and I'm going to go through the back loop only as I sew the eye around the hood. It is fairly close to the ear, so I'm just going to make sure that I only go through the main color. I'm not going to get my yarn needle going through the white. 
So I'm going to work this now all the way around and I'll go ahead and sew on my other eye as well. Just keeping them nice and even, the centers into the center of the hood. And then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I've got my eyes on. I've left my tails just in case, <clears throat> again, that I needed to move anything. And I want to position my muzzle nose in here. Get it all squished in between the eyes. And what you want to make sure when you sew it is that you don't go into these stitches. We need to still work into these stitches when we do the edging of the hood. So just make sure that you don't sew it down. So we can take our black yarn and we can sew. So I'm just going to move this yarn over that I'm into the corner. We're going to get our nose sewn right down onto the hood. So we're going right in between the eyes. Okay, so we want to get the black part of the nose sewn on with the black yarn. Then we'll leave that yarn and we'll come back to it. So where is my white yarn starts up here. Again, I want to keep these little guys puffy. So if you need to stuff them, you can, but the yarn is pretty heavy, so you probably don't need to stuff them it's up to you so we want to go and just grab that little bit of the hood and come up through the back loop only And just make sure when you're sewing them, you don't spread it out too much. You kind of go right under and come up through the back loop only of the muzzle. Okay, and then just work all the way around. Come around this one, back up, and then once you're happy, you can just weave in your tails. So now you can also just weave on some little whiskers. So I've just used a yarn needle with some thread and I've just woven through to make some whiskers for him. So this is optional. I mean, you can make them longer depending on what size hood you're working on. The toddler's kind of small, so I'm not I'm going to keep his whiskers fairly small here. I'm just going through the back loop here of the stitch. If you're working on one of the larger hoods, I would maybe make them a little bit bigger, but for the toddler, I'm just gonna go with this size of whisker. And you can just sort of fiddle with them. If you like how you have them positioned, then you can just weave in the tails and trim your ends. Okay, so we're gonna sew the hood to the blanket. So the blanket I have here, I've finished off so that I can just crochet along the edge. So we left 
this ball of yarn attached. And now what I've done is I've just laid the hood onto the blanket and I want to make sure that it's evenly spaced. So I counted that I have about 14 stitches, which is around seven inches. So I did that on each side. I counted the stitches and added a marker. And then I just know to sew the hood between these markers and that my hood is nice and even. So what you want to do is just take your yarn needle for bulky yarn. And you're just gonna go through each stitch of the blanket across the hood. And just make sure that you are doing it nice and even. If you need to clip the hood in place, just make sure that you sew it on even as you go across. So I'm going to complete that off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so that I have the hood all attached and now I can just take off my markers. And then what I'm going to do is join back on to my working yarn to complete the edging of the blanket. So I'm just going to chain one and work single crochets across to the hood. So I'll work that across and then I'm going to meet you up. Okay, so I've worked my stitches across to the hood and then what you'll do is just go through each stitch of the hood as well to finish that edge. So then what you're going to do is continue all the way over to the corner and in the corner we'll add three stitches and I'll meet you when I get there. Now when you get to your last stitch you're going to add three. And then we'll continue to single crochet down the side of the blanket. You just want to evenly space out your stitches when you're going down the side. So just as you work, take a peek and just see, make sure that you're not bunching up the side too much or that it's pulling. You just want the stitches to be evenly spaced. Okay, so that's looking good. And I'm just going to continue now working around the entire blanket till we get back to the top corner. So three single crochets in every corner, just work all the way around. Okay, so I finished off with two single crochet in the last stitch and I'm just gonna slip stitch in the starting single crochet to join and fasten off. So at this point I've used a total of five balls exactly. And I still wanna add some little mitts to my cat as well. So I'm gonna use another ball of our linen color to make the little mittens. I also, you also can add fringe. So it's up to you whether you wanna add fringe in this, on the sides and omit the mittens or add some fringe and the mittens, it's up to you. So I'll go through these next steps with you and show you how to do those final touches. So to crochet the paws, we'll make a magic ring Push the hook through, grabbing your first loop, pull that through and chain one. Now we'll work a total of eight single crochet in the ring. Okay, now to pull the ring tight, we're gonna push the work so that it's out of the way. Take your tail, start pulling it. You'll notice one pulls in and the other's popped up. So just take the loop that's pulled in, give it a tug, and now we'll slip stitch to join. 
chain one and work two single crochet in every stitch around. So I'll complete that. Whoops. So I'll complete working two single crochet in every stitch around and I'll do that off camera and meet you up. So you should have a total of 16 stitches and now we'll slip stitch to join. Chain one and work one single crochet into every stitch around. So you'll work one stitch around for a total of 16 stitches. I'll slip stitch to join. So that's a total now of three rounds. I want you to just continue working it for a total of eight rounds. So eight rounds in total at 16 stitches and then we'll meet up again. Okay, so if you count the rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're gonna do a decrease round. So we'll work one single crochet into the first stitch. So we've already chained one. So one single crochet, and then we'll do a decrease. So go through the stitch, pull up a loop, go right into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. One single crochet in the next, and then we'll do a decrease. One single crochet in the next, and a decrease, and repeat that all the way around. So now I've slip stitched to join, and we'll just work a single crochet in every stitch around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven stitches. Slip stitch to join, chain one, and we're going to do that one more time. So basically we're making a little mitten shape, and then we can add the pads to the bottom of this once we get this complete. Okay, and then when we've completed that, you can slip stitch to join and fasten off with a tail for sewing to the blanket. So now for the cat's paw pads, you could add, um, you could do them in white or you could do them in black. I think I may add them in black just so they stand out, but whatever color is fine and you need to make five of them. So you also need to make two of your paws. So the pads are really simple to make. We're just going to make a magic ring. Grab the first, chain one, and we're gonna work five single crochet in the ring. We'll pull the ring tight. So take your tail. And slip stitch to join. And then all you're gonna do is fasten that off. So you wanna make five little pads that we can add to our mitten. Okay, so I sewed all of my little paw pads to the mitten. So I just put one here and then just sew the other one sort of around. And then what you can do is sew this to the blanket. Now you wanna make sure that your tail is on the side before you sew on the paw pads. And then to sew it to the blanket, what you want to do is just line up the mitten to the edge of the blanket like this. I like to have that this goes to the back and that the paw pads are going to the inside of the blanket. So I just line up my stitches and you can just sew that right to the blanket. Just make sure that your mitten is you don't sew it close so that they can fit their little hands in. And 
you can just weave in your tail to secure that. What I also did is just added a little bit of fringe to the side. Now my original blanket, I added fringe all down the side of the blanket as well, but this one I added the little paw. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just adding some fringe to the side of the hood. So what you wanna do is take really whatever colors you want. I'm going with the more neutral. So I'm leaving the eye color out. And you want about 10 inches of fringe. So you can take your measuring tape and just measure that you have about 10. And I'm gonna do five stitches in total. So I'll go ahead, three, four, five. So each piece of fringe will be made up of one of each color. And I just like to use my crochet hook to attach the fringe. So I'm just going to the edge of the hood. for the adult and child size you may want to add a little bit more fringe across the hood but for the toddler size five is good so just attach your fringe like this to the hood Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.